What's going on everyone? It is Nick here again at NJ's Bricks and I've got a cool video to show you today. I'm going to show you the process of kind of semi-restoring slash fixing up this old 1980s Timex watch display case. This thing came out super cool. I'm very pleased with where it ended up versus the condition that I got it in. I'm going to explain a little bit about my process and show you some pictures along the way of fixing this thing up. Please like and subscribe down below if you enjoyed this content, guys. I would really appreciate that. I think you're going to find this video pretty cool. Let's go ahead and jump into it. So this right here is the display case. This is the original ad posting that I saw on Facebook Marketplace. I'm getting ready to bring some of my wares to a flea market, and I really wanted to have a nice way to display stuff to make it exciting and enticing for people and to make it easy for them to see what I've got and make them interested in buying what I have to sell. So I wanted to get a display case, some way to show off some of the minifigures in a cool fashion. Came across this ad and it seemed like a solid price. It definitely needed some cleaning up, but they said the motor worked, the thing spun around. So that's the biggest thing I wanted to see. So I went and picked this thing up, brought it home, got a look at it. The motor was working really well. But the light wasn't coming on, unfortunately, so had to do some troubleshooting. I started with this thing by disassembling it. And on the inside where it says Timex, that's cut out of the sheet metal. And then it was wrapped in some kind of red felted material. Same with the bottom of the machine. And that felt had worn down to pretty much dust. It was disgusting. It was getting all over everything. So one of the first things I did was peel all of the felt layers off the sheet metal and clean all of that up. Then I took out the panes of plexiglass. I got all those cleaned up and windexed and looking as good as I could. I got a lot of the outer areas and the inside top where the light goes inside the machine was all gross and full of dead bugs and stuff. Got all of that cleaned up, got it all looking nice, and then I had to work on the functionality. So originally, mechanically, my problem with this thing was that the light didn't come on. The motor was working great. So I got a replacement bulb, I got the bulb installed, hooked everything back up, and now my motor was no longer working. So I brought it over to my buddy Aaron's shop, light was going good, motor wasn't working. We found out that there was some kind of short or issue with, on the side of the device, on the side of the case, there was a pause button. You could press it and it would stop the rotation for a minute, then you could let it go and it would keep going so people could stop it to get a good look at things. There was some kind of short or issue with that button that was preventing uh, the motor from running once I got the new light installed. So anyways, we just bypassed the switch on the side. We got the motor and the light working great. And then I went ahead and did some different work fixing it up. At first, I wrapped all of the Timex layers in like a fabric from different IPs of like Lego that I sell. So there was some Star Wars, some superheroes, some... Uh, what else did I have on there? Harry Potter and Disney princesses. But that fabric didn't really adhere very well to the sheet metal, so I ended up taking that off, and I went with sort of a collage approach. I just thought that would be unique and fun. I took some cutouts from some discarded instruction booklets that I had laying around and other Lego stuff. I cut them up. I glued them all around the Timex lettering, and then I reinstalled the plastic Timex letters, in the laser cut slots from the sheet metal that they originally were in it would have been really cool to get it to say lego here but that would have required like actually cutting out some sheet metal then cutting the lego logo out of some other pieces of sheet metal getting those welded or affixed in in some way that seemed like a lot of work so i stuck with the original timex lettering and then i wrapped the whole thing in lego imagery on the inside i cut in half a 15 by 15 gray base plate and cut a little circle out of the middle so I could affix it to the bottom of the machine, which is just over 15 by 15 inches. So it was a perfect fit to fill up the bottom of the machine here and have a Lego base kind of bring in some more Lego themes. So now I've got my motor working. I've got my light working. I've got my base there. I've got my art. One of my other issues was that this thing does have a key lock, but the key was broken off into the lock in half. I was able to get the other piece of the broken key out but I'm not really easily able to get a replacement key. And personally, I'm going to be attending this case all the time when it's in use. So I didn't really need it to lock. I just needed it to latch. So what I ended up doing was filing down an old key, getting it into the slot there, and then just gluing it in place and letting the lock itself turn back and forth free form. Loosened it a little bit on the back side of the inside of the door so I could do that. So now I can just open and close the latch really easily. Um, so that I can get stuff out for customers when they're ready to buy something. 
And the last thing I wanted to do to this thing was add some LEDs. So I bought a 50 foot LED strand, which was probably way bigger than I needed. 20 would have been fine, I'm sure. But anyways, I kind of layered it along three of the spines inside of the case here. The fourth is where the latch goes. So that really wasn't going to work very well, but I layered it all along the spines and across the top and the bottom in a couple of spots. And these are customizable. So I can change the color. I can change the type of lights like flashing, strobing, fading lights. And I think it's just really cool. It makes the thing really pop. When I'm in the flea market, people are going to be able to see it from the other side of the room. Little kids are going to be interested in it. They're going to want to come up and take a look. And here is the finished display. I've loaded it up with minifigures. I've finished tricking it out and I'm really pleased with how it came out. It's not the most professional job in the world, but it is going to serve its purpose. It's going to drive some interest over to check out what's going on at my flea market booth. And I'm really excited for people to get to see it and hopefully buy some minifigures out of this thing because I think it does an awesome job of showing them off. Well, I hope you guys liked today's video. This is pretty cool. It was a fun project for me. I was really glad to see my vision sort of come to life at the end. And I'm really excited to get some use out of this. I'll probably make a video from the flea market at some point. Hopefully that's going to go well. If you like this content, please like and subscribe down below. I'd really appreciate it. And I'll see you next video.